Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this video, I will take a look at what's going to happen to Paladin in the next standard rotation. There's a big standard rotation with the core set replacing basic and classic sets in standard format, but Paladin doesn't really mind. Paladin's basic and classic set weren't that great anyway, and most of the playable cards have been included in the core set. So the only cards that Paladin is missing basically from basic and classic sets are Blessing of Wisdom, so some card draw, Avenging Wrath, so some burst, that's really too bad, I loved Avenging Wrath, and Hammer of Wrath, a little bit of damage with card draw, that was occasionally used in some Paladin combo decks, but not much otherwise. However, Paladin will of course also lose stuff from the expansion from 2019, as well as from Galagorn's Awakening. And Galagorn's Awakening turned out to be pretty good for Paladin, because all three Paladin cards from that set, Air Raid, Shotbot and Scale Lord, actually saw play. I especially like Air Raid, Air Raid has been a fun card and Shotbot, great two drop, Scale Lord, Dragon works with Murlocs, really sweet synergies. But all of these are now going away from standard format. Other than that, Paladin's 2019 was kind of weak. From Descent of Dragons, which was really, really strong expansion, this is like the best of what Paladin got. Sure, there is Light Force Zealot and Light Force Crusader, so those pure Paladin cards. They're going away, leaving Urel alone as a pure Paladin card, so pure Paladin kind of dies from those. But then again, pure Paladin was only one platform for Librams right now anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. No Storm the Timeless, used in Ramp Paladin, but Ramp Paladin already got nerfed and that already diminished the play rate of that deck, so okay, it's not a big deal anymore. Amber Watcher, so more Dragon Synergies are going away. And Dragon Rider Talrita, okay, Dragon Rider never saw much play, it wasn't that great of a card, but it was the legendary for Paladin of that set. Seabers of Full Doom likewise wasn't that great for Paladin. Sure, all the quest decks are now dying, making mummies was the paladin quest and it saw some niche play occasionally but it was never that great. Highlander decks are dying, Highlander Paladin wasn't that great either because the paladin specific Highlander synergy card Surfing of the Sands was the weakest Highlander synergy card. But yeah, whatever was left there is going to die. The major loss for paladin is Salhet's Pride. Detrital draw two one health minions from your deck, and Salhead Sprite was really, really good at tutoring some minions and drawing cards for you, so that's an actual loss. Subdue saw some play, but not lately. And then tip the scales. Okay, it sees play in Murloc Paladin, it saw play in Ramp Paladin, but Ramp Paladin kind of already died anyway, and Murloc Paladin already dies for 100 other reasons, so it's not that big of a deal. Rise of Shadows was generally a weak expansion and it was weak for Paladin as well, although it does kill one current Paladin archetype which is the Dual Paladin, because Dual is rotating out. Dual Paladin is currently the best it has ever been and now it's going to lose its signature card. Commander Rissa never was a thing in Secret Paladin anyway. Cold Adventure, okay, sure, it saw some play, like in Dual Paladin, and so did Light Force Blessing, but this sort of big Paladin archetypes seem much more difficult to pursue right now. Looking at the Paladin meta decks, Broom Paladin is looking strong going into the next year. It is losing two key cards though, it's losing Blessing of Wisdom and it's losing Salhet Sprite, so it's losing a lot of card draw. So ideally you would be able to find some new card draw pieces that you would add instead of these cards and then Broom Paladin, boom, it's all good, ready to go. The whole Librem package survives this rotation, so all the Librem stuff is there and it's just a strong package. However, there's going to be some competition because Paladin looks to have another strong archetype in the future. It's the Silverhand Paladin, Token Paladin. Sure, it is losing some stuff, it's losing Air Raid, and these current versions, these are kind of like practice versions for when the real thing is going to happen with the corset. So these are built on a pure basis, the pure cards are going to go away, Sure, that's a thing. And then there's that red scale dragon tamer, Death Riddle Draw Dragon. It's not going away, it's going to stay in standard format, it just doesn't have any Dragons. Well, Dragons to tutor. But this token summoning thing, Day at the Fair, buffs with Carnival Barker, Lotraxion, these are going to get more support from the core set. For example, Stand Against Darkness is coming back. So, Token Paladin looks like a really potent archetype for the future. And all the losses here are easily replaced by new cards. On the other hand, Murloc Paladin looks really, really dead. Murloc War Leader didn't make it into the corset, so we can't play with that. Scale Lord is rotating out, and with Scale Lord goes the reason to run Red Scale Dragon Tamer, so the remaining Murloc package is just really weak. There doesn't seem to be any reason to build a Murloc deck anymore with the new corset. And Ramp Paladin and Dual Paladin, of course, are going to be in a lot of trouble because they lose their signature cards. 
But overall, Paladin looks like one of the major winners of this rotation. Paladin's 2019 was relatively weak, and Paladin's 2020 was extremely powerful. All the Librem stuff is going to remain, there's a ton of support for the token Paladin, so Paladin already has multiple good candidates for a top tier deck. Of course, we'll have to wait and see what Fortune in the Barons is going to bring, but Paladin is looking really good going into rotation. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.